Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. Now today I'm going to dispel a few myths and answer the top 10 questions I get about motor oil. Now for those of you who subscribe to my channel or for those of you who just stop by occasionally, you know that I build a lot of engines for people and send them all over the world. And questions come to me via email and text or phone call and people inevitably ask me questions about motor oil. Some of these questions go far beyond the average what grade should I use or should I use synthetic or traditional. Some of them are fairly in depth and are actually pretty good questions. First. Let's talk about the basic function of oil in your engine. And it has basically three functions. First is lubrication. All those moving parts inside need to be lubricated. This world would be a miserable place without lube. Second, particulate. As those parts are moving together, they're wearing, and small particles are being shaved off. The oil takes those particles, rinses them down into the oil pan, and they get taken out through the oil filter. And third, it's for heat dissipation. As your engine heats up, the oil travels through, picks up the heat, carries it down to the oil pan, and that's where it cools down. That's why the oil pan is on the bottom of the engine, and it's usually in the airstream underneath the car. Most of the questions I get are about the differences between synthetic and traditional oil. And in order to understand synthetic oil a little bit more, we need to understand the history. One of the biggest transforming developments of our century has been the discovery of organic synthesis. That is the taking organic compounds and manipulating them to form all different kinds of materials, fabrics, fluids, and plastics. By understanding the geometry of these organic compounds, scientists realized they could manipulate the molecular structure in order to make these materials perform in a specific way. That means scientists realized they could actually improve things that they found in nature. One of the byproducts of this process has been the development of synthetic motor oils. It is believed the first synthesized hydrocarbons were created in about 1877. Now it wasn't until about 1929 when the commercial development of synthesized hydrocarbons was undertaken by Standard Oil of Indiana. Now in 1929 there was not a huge market for synthetic oils and it wasn't until about eight years later when the first PAO was created. PAO is a synthetic product using olefin polymerization as a main ingredient in synthetic lubricants. Now something else happened that also spurred the development of synthetic oils. You got it, World War II. Now during the war, raw materials were hard to come by and from 1938 to 1944, the Germans evaluated thousands of esters in quest to try and make a synthetic oil. Now it wasn't until after the war when the development of synthetic oils really took off because during the space race there was a need for high speed, high temperature, low friction lubricants for very complex machines and high performance engines. Now because of the incredible benefits of synthetic jet engine oil, the military started to use it and back then they were paying up to $35 a quart for synthetic jet engine oil. And where you have pilots, you also have car guys. So you have guys that were working on these airplanes, these jet engines, they were taking the synthetic oil, they were putting it in their cars. Now after several years of fine tuning and formulation, Amsoil became the first 100% synthetic ester engine oil in 1972. Now as consumers became more and more aware of the benefits of synthetic oil, companies started to develop more products and by the mid 90s every company had a synthetic oil in its product line. Now since conventional motor oils are not as heat stable, the benefits of a synthetic oil are fairly obvious. Synthetic oil has fewer impurities, it can often go between 10 and 15 thousand miles between oil changes, it has a uniform molecular size so it has less friction. Since it goes through a different refining process, it also reduces deposits. It gives an additional boost in protection and cleanliness. It has better function in cold and extreme weather. It helps emit fewer emissions and it offers better fuel and oil economy. Now when a company says it has a full synthetic oil, there really is no global standard on how to measure it. So when a company says it's full synthetic, that's really more of a marketing term. Then we have synthetic blend oils. These oils are less refined than full synthetic. Compared to a traditional oil, they are more technologically advanced. Since they do have traditional oil in it, they do have more impurities and an inconsistent molecular structure. So when you talk about a synthetic blend, it's more of a cost versus benefit kind of thing. 
Now I say this in every one of my videos, regardless I'm going to talk about paint, oils, lubricants, always look in the owner's manual and use what the manufacturer recommends. And according to the manual right here, it says use a full synthetic engine oil that conforms to Dexos 1 specifications or Dexos 1 standards. Now if it doesn't require synthetic oil, you want to make sure you get an SAE certified oil. For conventional oil, you turn your oil around and right there on the back you see the SAE logo. That means it's an SAE grade or certified oil to meet that standard. Now you really have to check because this pen grade SAE 10W40 oil, it's a partial synthetic oil but it's made for high performance engines. It doesn't have the SAE logo on the back because it has zinc and phosphorus in it for high performance engines. Now that all leads to the first question that I get asked most often. Can I use synthetic oil? And I say go check the owner's manual to make sure you're using what the manufacturer recommends. The second question is I'm currently running a conventional motor oil, can I switch to synthetic? And the answer is yes. Since synthetic is a higher performance oil, you can switch into synthetic oil anytime you want, which comes to our first myth. The first myth is once you change to synthetic oil, you can change back. That is a myth and it is false. It's false because uh, synthetic blend oils have both synthetic and traditional oil, so they blend together anyway. So it's false. You can go to synthetic and then go back to traditional. Question three is a combination of a question and a myth. Some people send me emails say I accidentally put synthetic oil in with my traditional oil. Am I okay? The answer is yes. You can mix them together. That's one of the myths that you can't mix those oils together. But as long as they're the same weight being like 10W30, if they're both 10W30, you can totally mix them together. Now the fourth question is what is the best oil to use? So here's my list. Number one, Valvoline, best conventional oil. Number two, Mobile One, best synthetic. Number three, Castrol, GTX, HM, best for older, high mileage cars. Number four, Royal Purple, best for diesel. Number five, Quaker State. Number six, Total Motor Oil. Number seven, Pennzoil Motor Oil. And number eight, Amsoil Synthetic. Now this leads to the next myth that you can't mix brands together. That's false. Now imagine you're driving down the road, your check engine light comes on, so you pull over to the side of the road and you're in the middle of nowhere. Pull the hood, open it up, pull out the dipstick, and you see the engine is bone dry. So you walk around to the back of your car, you pop open your trunk, and you look in, and all you have are five different oils, but they're all the same grade. Five different quarts of oil, all made by different manufacturers. A couple of them are synthetic, but they're all 10W30. You can take all of those oils, put them into your engine, and you'll be perfectly fine. Question five is kind of a combination of two questions. It's be is it better to change your own oil, and do you save money by changing your own oil? And the answer is yes and no. I like to change my own oil because I get to see what goes in, I can control it, make sure it's done right, but it is true, you don't save a whole bunch of money doing it yourself. It's about 25 bucks to change your oil if you do it yourself and you got the labor of having to do it. So if you don't have anywhere to do it, you need someone else to do it, you go to an oil change place, it's going to cost about the same price. So yes, I think it's better to change your own oil, but no, you're not going to save a bunch of money. Question number six is about oil grades. Can I switch from 10W30 to 5W30? This is also tied into the myth that you can't change between grades. That is false. So the question, can you switch from 10W30 to 5W30? The answer is yes. And the reason is flowability. The first number, the 5 or 10, the 10 number, 10W10 10 winter, is going to be a little thicker during cold startups than the uh, 5W oil, 5 winter. But since they both have a 30 on the end, 10W30, 5W30 at the end, when they get to temperature 210 degrees, they're both going to perform at the same viscosity. Question 7. Is 0W20 always synthetic? The answer is yes. With tight tolerances of today's engines, the low viscosity synthetic formula is chosen to optimize fuel economy. Question number 8. Should I change from a 10W oil to a 5W oil in the winter? The answer is you can. Remember that the lower the W number, the better it's going to perform in cold temperatures. The W stands for winter, not weight. So 5W30, it's 5 winter 30, is going to perform better in colder temperatures and cold startups than a 10W30. Question number nine, what if I put conventional oil 
in an engine that requires synthetic oil in an emergency? The answer is it's okay. Remember that a synthetic oil is more heat stable, so you want to change the oil back to synthetic as soon as possible. This is another myth. The myth is that conventional oil will ruin an engine that requires synthetic. That is false. And our final question, number 10, does synthetic oil cause leaks? The answer is no. That is a myth. The myth that synthetic oil wears down seals and causes rubber gaskets to fail is false. If all of your seals and gaskets are in good condition, synthetic oil simply is not going to just make it start leaking. So those are the top 10 questions and myths people ask me about all the time. And I hope that helps you out a little bit, be a little more confident when you're changing oil or choosing an oil for your car, new car, old car, whatever it is. Now if you haven't already, please click on the subscribe so you can stay up with all the projects I do here in the shop and all these little videos to help you out. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.